also known as Dragonfly 7673. This is Tigger, also known as Tigger. And today is Tuesday, November 12th. So today is 11, 12, 13. Um, it is about 6 p.m. And I didn't record yesterday because I took yesterday off. After I've learned that if I go away for a weekend, um, or have a vacation or whatever, I always like to have one extra day of downtime to, I call it my re, my re-entry day. It's the day to get the laundry done, get stuff unpacked, get, you know, the house back in order, and kind of decompress before going back to work. So if I can, I try and do that. So yesterday was my, my decompression re-entry day, and I thought about uh, podcasting and then decided that I just didn't feel like it. I love you guys, but <laughs> I needed the time off. Anyway, the I realized as I was trying to put today together that I'm kind of hitting that weird time of year. This is the time of year where I'm going to be working on things that I can't show you right away because the holidays are around the corner. I mean, we're in the middle of November. Uh, Christmas is coming soon. Uh, so if you follow me on Plurk and Instagram, you may see some things because some because some of the people there for don't follow me there. Um, but you won't see them on the podcast <laughs> right away. Which unfortunately means that I don't have too much to show you. Um, so, I did work on something this weekend. Can't show you. Anyway, so I will talk to you about Knitting in the Mitten and show you some of the things that I have from there. I'm not going to show you everything um, because it just gets a little ridiculous, but I'm going to show you some of the special things that happened this week. I feel a little rambly today. I'm sorry. So first of all, before I even left for Knit in the Mitten. I had found out that I won um, one of the prizes from the 30 day uh, sweater challenge giveaway. So I got my prize. It arrived, um, the 30 day sweater is by the same people that do Yarn Nation. Um, so it arrived in this bag. The And I got six skeins of three Irish girls uh, this is their Springvale bulky base, 98 yards of superwash merino. Um, this was donated by a good yarn in Sarasota. Um, recently, the uh, recently Tina of Knitting Blooms actually did a review of their online store, and one of the things she talked about was that they have some exclusive colorways done just for them. Well, this is an exclusive colorway that three Irish girls did called Sea Urchin. Um, so I have six skeins of this. Now, um, before I forget, uh, I just watched an episode of Dramatic Knits, and Steve and his leading man now are doing the Leading Men Fiber Arts yarn and fiber, and they made an announcement that a good yarn in Sarasota, same one I'm talking about, is going to be carrying their yarn and is possibly going to be asking them for an exclusive colorway. So, it's all connected. <laughs> anyway, so I have six skeins of this. They are 98 yards each, which means I have just under 600 yards. I have absolutely no idea what I'm going to do with this. Um, the I think the idea in all the, the, the last round of prizes that they did, I think the idea was for everyone to, or for all the prizes to be a sweater's worth of yarn. But 600 yards of bulky weight is not a sweater's worth of yarn for my size. Um, so it is very likely to become something else. I have no idea what yet. But that came, uh, that came before Knitting the Mitten. Um, today, I, well, it might have come sooner. I didn't check the mail the last couple days. Um, 
So today when I went out to the mailbox, I realized that my shipment from Unique Sheep, I had ordered this a while ago. This is their, uh, it was a Christmas special kit. And um, this is the a kit for the Nutcracker Scarf by uh, Janine Lacrosse. She does a lot of patterns for them, for their mystery knit-alongs and their regular patterns and their clubs. So this is the Nutcracker Scarf and the colorway is, the colorway goes like this. Um, one, two, three, four. And I'm sorry, I don't have pictures of anything, of hardly anything this week because if I was smart, even though I was, re well, I was going to take pictures yesterday and um, I thought I would have time and then it ended up snowing all day and there was never good lighting for going outside plus everything was wet um, and this I just got today so I don't have pictures of anything I'm showing you and I'm sorry someday they will show up on Ravelry but anyway so that's the the nutcracker scarf with the yarn Tiki don't eat the tissue paper and the the club shipment actually came with a lot of other stuff. It came with a a needle gauge, which I don't know if you'll be able to see, but it's etched on there as Unique Sheep 2013 with a nutcracker on it. I'm kind of surprised that the nutcracker doesn't look like a sheep or that the sheep's not in here. Um, but it is, it's very cute. Um, there was a... Um, Trying to get this down. A kit for a mitten keychain. Uh, or it could be an ornament too. There's the little mitten keychain. And here's the little wood mitten form. So it's kind of like those little mini sock kits, except for mittens. Um, it came with Christmas tea. I opened it up earlier and one is a gingerbread black tea and the other one is a orange something tea. It smelled really good. And then it also came with a copy of the Nutcracker. So it's actually the... Um, I never really... I guess it makes sense that the Nutcracker is based off of a story, but I honestly didn't realize that. I've only seen it as a ballet. Um, I've also seen it as, I think I've seen it as a play, but most commonly it's a ballet. But this actually is a story. So um, it contains the, nutca the Nutcracker and then also the, a story called The Golden Pot. So it's actually two stories in here. I was surprised. It's called The Nutcracker and the Golden Pot, which makes it sound like it's one story, but it's actually two different stories, and The Golden Pot's actually first. I thought it was very, very neat that they sent a copy of the story. So, um, I think that's all I have to show you for projects except for um, spinning, which I'll incorporate into the knitting and the mitten. Um, I did not, I did not really knit at the knitting retreat, which I think I had said last week was that you think you're going to knit and then you don't actually knit. And several people were saying that they didn't actually get much knitting done. I was trying to explain to people at work what you do at a knitting retreat. And I say, you have friends and you gather and you, uh, you laugh and you gab and you talk and you drink and, and that's it. <laughs> um, not everybody drank, but, um, but the one thing I had, just because I really liked the flavor, um, Rain Sarah, who is Rain Lover, um, she used to do the Rain Lover Knits podcast. Uh, she's thinking about getting back into podcasting, but it's not for sure yet. Uh, but I absolutely adore her. Uh, she was there, and she let me taste her J.K. Scrumpies. Um, Kagi had put out a call and asked if anybody was going to want Scrumpies because they needed to get it ordered in because 
they usually have so much that the store needs to pre-order. Um, I didn't really know what it was. Well, apparently it's a hard cider, and it was very, it was very good. It had a very good flavor. So I had one Friday night and one Saturday night, and I was kind of nursing them through the night. So it wasn't like I was doing any heavy drinking. I just really liked the cider. Um, so. So anyway, so the guy I was talking to was laughing because I said, so I go, so you're supposed to be knitting, but really you're mostly talking and laughing and drinking. And I said, so it's kind of like going hunting. And he burst out laughing. But he understood a little better. And I realized there are people that go hunting and actually go hunting and that's part of their food and stuff like that. I also know a lot of people who go hunting because of the social aspect. It's a you know way to get away from the wives for a while and just hang out with your buds. Whatever. I see it was not much different. So, um, when I got there on Thursday, I actually was running a little late on Thursday. I didn't pack beforehand. I put together my present for my swap and my the presents I put together for my roomies, and which was Mary Gail and... RN 1096, whose name is Heather. Last week I didn't remember what her name was. Um, I put together that stuff on Wednesday, and then Thursday I actually packed stuff. Um, and I had been planning on leaving at 9, and I left actually closer to 10.30 because I, as I, cause I was kind of slow getting up and getting moving, and then I decided that I better do the cat litter because best friend was going to be watching the cats, but he doesn't like doing the cat litter. Um, and since he was doing me a favor, I figured the least I could do was change the cat litter. Um, taking out the garbage, putting the trash cans out, straightening up a little. I mean, it was just kind of putsy stuff and packing and loading the car and things. So I left about 10.30. It didn't really, I wasn't worried about it because it wasn't like we had a set time we had to be there. So, and people were, some people arrived Wednesday, some people, and people arrived all day Thursday, some people came Friday, didn't matter. Um, but I got there Thursday, and when I, uh, uh, people helped me carry my stuff in, and then, um, I, uh, when I, I found my room, and the first thing I saw was a mobile, m mobile hanging that was full of handcrafted dragonflies. And that I have a picture of, so I'm going to put it here because I can't show you the mobile itself. Um, it's already hanging, so be right back. So, I really like that. That turned out to be from my SWAT partner, and she and her well, her daughters made all the little different types of dragonflies, which makes it extra special. So <laughs> they're little crafted ones. She said they, you know, they spent a few days on it making making them. That was really cool. I thought that was very sweet. Um, and then the next thing I saw was this basket sitting on the dresser. Now the way we did the swap this year. In previous years, I guess they actually did a big swap, um, kind of a swap party, and everybody kind of passed their swap presents around. And that's what we did at Guts, Grits, and Pink Lipstick, is we had one night where everybody, like, you know, somebody started out and they gave their swap present to just to whoever their gift person, and then that person gave theirs, and it all went around. Um, this year they had decided to that you would kind of hide this person's swap present somewhere. Now, I had this fear. I used to have a boyfriend whose family used to hide the Easter baskets, and they would hide them in weird places, like they'd wrap them in plastic and then put them inside the toilet tank. And I'm thinking, oh, I am not up for hiding it. And then I was assured it didn't actually have to be hidden. It just needed to be someplace where the person could discover it. So in my case, I saw the dragonfly mobile as soon as I came in, and then when I looked at the dresser, there was my, my the rest of my gift. So, and in this, whoop, I'm going to try and balance this. 
There are several things. I'm trying to find the first thing. Ah. So one of the things I had written on my questionnaire is that I like dragonflies. I mean, you all know that. But I especially like dragonflies that have a story that goes with them. I mean, I like dragonfly earrings and necklaces. That's fine. But what I really like is when there's something unique about the dragonfly. Like when somebody sends me a picture and says, hey, this dragonfly was flying all around my studio today and made me think of you. I think that's awesome. I'll print out those pictures and put them on my desk. Um, the I have a dragonfly up here that's framed that my mom and and my son put together because they actually found the dragonfly on my mom's car. And so then they actually made a shadow box with it and gave it to me as a housewarming present. Or there's the one my mom did that um, where she took all my first yarn that I ever spun and knit it up and put a dragonfly on top of it so it became artwork. Those are all really cool to me because they there's something to them. Um, I have a picture up here that Tiff took when she was out and about and she framed it and gave it to me. So anyway she said that um, Bethany is the person, Bethany G is the person that did this for me. So she said, I know you like dragonflies, but you like them to have a story. So she actually wrote a story. She, she wrote a little fiction story about a dragonfly and a little girl finding each other in the garden. And the little story made me tear up more than, more than anything. At that point, I didn't know her daughters had made them mobile, which, because that yeah, ended up being extra special too but this made me tear up that she actually took the time to do that more than anything else so I thought that was very cool um, she made me a cowl it's got this little pom-pom on it and so I got that and then I got this yarn is actually the same yarn as the pom-pom uh, it's Malabrigo something. It's the thick and thin. I forgot how much she said she thinks is left on here. She told me, she told me later. And she, and this fiber was from Spunky Eclectic and it's called Beach Day. So it's about three ounces. And then there's lots of little things in here. Um, a thing of soak, uh, a little postcard, uh, a, a dragonfly tattoo, some tea in a little in a little case. Um, there were four Reese's peanut butter cups. Now there's only three, but I am really proud to say that I did not eat them all at once. Um, there's lotion and mints, and uh, because I also like Wizard of Oz. This is actually a journal, so it's blank on the inside. There is a uh, ruby slipper chapstick holder. It actually has a Burt's Bees in it. So it was just, and then of course it's in this cute little basket. It was a very fun swap gift, and I thank Bethany so much. Um, When I did my swap basket, I had Lori Yu, who, um, she owns North Cabin Fiber Arts. North, I think that's right. And she, she and her boyfriend have been going and visiting Alaska, and they're planning to keep doing that for longer, longer lengths of time. So I didn't think she wanted a lot of stuff. So I was trying to think what I could do. And so I got her some fiber that was, um, local to near my parents at my favorite yarn shop. I got her a bottle of red wine that is from the local winery where my where in my hometown and I don't know much about wine. So when I was picking it, my son and I were looking and we ended up we picked the one that was actually grown on the hills there. Um I hope she liked it. I, I don't know much about wine. I'm not a wine drinker. Um uh, uh, a thing of caramel corn that's from the local gourmet popcorn place and I forgot what, I think there's uh, little things anyway um, oh and a wine glass <laughs> so that was um, that was what I got her in case anybody was wondering um, 
the way our room was set up, we had one twin and one full-size bed for three people. So because I got there first, I took the twin bed so I could be by, so I could sleep by myself. For one thing, um, I tend to get up and go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. <coughs> um, the sad thing that we found out Thursday is that Mary Gale didn't get to come. It's her story to tell, but she was very upset, and I missed her, and I need to mail her roomy gift because I got it just for her. <laughs> it was specifically for her. I got it oh, quite a while ago when I found out she was my roommate. Um, so I'm going to be mailing that. And But Heather, the other one, I have never met her before, and she is just a hoot. I mean, I could not have picked an, a, a better random roommate. So we got along really well. So I really like that. Um, all right. I'm, like I said, I'm not going to show you everything from the retreat. I'm not going to show you my purchases. Um, I bought stuff from Fiberista Files, from um, Susan of Girl Cave Bags, from Kelly of Sheep Dreamery, um, from CJ Coho, and from another somebody I don't know. Um, there was a lot of stuff. Oh, and um, Tick's Trinket. Um, Jane uh, from uh, Katie's mom. Uh, Katie's mom wasn't there, but Katie was selling them on her behalf. So I'm just going to show you, but I am going to show you the things that were special for the retreat. Um, Heather uh, did the colorways for the retreat. Now she has five colorways um, that she did. Um, one was hard cider which was done based on the scrumpies that I was talking about the apple hard cider the hard apple cider um, one was I can't pronounce the name of the lodge but it was it was the lodge colorway um, I don't know what the other ones there was five total and one of them was just add tequila uh, we were asked what our favorite drink is when we did our surveys and then Kagi used that to decide on one of the colorways since apparently the favorite drink was tequila so this was the colorway that came from that. I actually had picked the hard cider one which was a dark maroon, a dark evergreen and natural and then the more I kept looking at this one I really wanted this colorway and Sarah, rain lover, she got this one and she wanted the hard cider so we swapped. So along with this, um, Lisa Dykstra, who's Yen for Yarn, she designed a cowl pattern to go with the yarn. It's called the Under the Wire Cowl. We got it for free for being at the retreat, but this is available on Ravelry. I don't know how much it costs. I didn't look. Um, several people actually wound their yarn right away and um, Diane, I don't know her Ravelry name, and Tina, Blooming Knitter, uh, finished theirs right away. I know that Artie Knits finished her since she's been home, and I know other people also started them. I have not uh, started mine yet because I'm working on presents. Although they all finished them within um, basically a day. So I had been trying to... Um, I took my sweater to knit. I didn't knit on it at all. Oh, but I forgot to tell you. I did knit on it before the retreat and I finished the first sleeve. I will put the picture of the sweater at the end with one sleeve done. However, I have not started the second sleeve. Um, so I brought the sweater to the retreat, but I didn't work on it because I need to keep track of the decreases. And even though it wouldn't be hard, it was just I just didn't pull it out. However, Susan of Girl Cave Bags was really excited when I told her that her bag went to China and back. Um, so, I had so much fun this week, this weekend. I, I, I know I'm going off track, but I met people. I met uh, Jennifer, who is Wooly Girl, and she is just the sweetest thing and funny. Um, I hang out with Artie Knits and Tina and Diane and, and, um, 
Angela, who's Knit Nut, was next to me, and um, Snot Stein. Her name's not really supposed to be Snot Stein, but that's what we call her. Uh, that's Shannon and her mom. Uh, they were there, and they were just a hoot and very, very helpful. Um, Dragon Tamer Brat and her husband were there, and I spent so much time with, with them. And there were so many people. I mean, we tried... We all kind of sat in our areas because after a while you kind of get comfy, especially after I took out my spinning wheel. I tended to stay in the same spot. It was just easier. So, but I think I at least touched base with almost everyone. And at dinner we try, we kind of would like pick, you know, at meals you'd kind of sit up with different people sometimes. And it, it was just... It was really nice. I, I met people who I never knew. I got to re-kindle uh, friendships with people that I had met at GGPL, um, like CJ Kopek and Yen for Yarn and Debbie, who was Fluffy Dog owner, and, and she was my roommate there, and we sat together most of this weekend, and I really love her. And um, Ponky and Rain Lover, and uh, it was just... Uh, Katie and, and Heather and uh, it was just it was really good and it was very relaxing and yeah, sometimes it could be overwhelming having that many people but you know I could I could go hide for a little bit that was fine um, and I, I wasn't the only one I know and I never hid for very long I mean sometimes my idea was of hiding was to just go downstairs and make myself a cup of coffee to get over for five minutes um, uh, Dina 1975 um, She's a hoot. She is just, she's a character. And she arranged massages, and I had an hour-long massage, and oh, that was wonderful. Um, now I'm babbling at you. Anyway, it was just, it was a lot of fun. I already put my name down for next year. So, <laughs> I, I, it was, it was good. Um, we had door prizes the last night, and I won this braid of fiber from uh, Hillary, who's Hippie Penguin. Oh, which reminds me of something I need to tell you guys. So, I don't know what this fiber is. I need to ask Hillary. However, it's very pretty. Um, Mr. Hippie Penguin, uh, Dave, who is Hillary's husband, with all the problems going on with Blip shutting people down, and he was starting an Indiegogo fundraiser to start a website and server service called Pod Fiber, which would help people, um, which would be a place for people to put their video webcasts. Now, they didn't raise all the money they wanted to on Indiegogo, but they got enough to actually get started. And if you go to podfiber.com, you can find out more information, and even though the Indiegogo is shut down, you can still donate. There's a donate button, um, and Dave has more information. I'm letting, I'm just letting you know it's um, that they're working on it, and hopefully this will be a place that can grow and be a place for video podcasters in the future. So, um, we also got. A goodie bag which was this bag it is it's filled with there's lots of little samples of things um, that's a little into the world tiny bit of fiber um, that's from this one's a from uh, fiber addiction there are all sorts of little things in here there are also things like business uh, business cards with uh, with coupon codes. I don't want you to see the coupon code. Um, tape measure. So th there's all sorts of little things in here. I'm not going to go into everything that is in here, but I cannot believe the level of sponsorship that um, there are. So this is a little sample from RJ. Um, there was also um, a couple patterns and I got a uh, Noro catalog or magazine 
and this was my other door prize was a Tix trinket in um, uh, reds and greens. I might make this a um, gift uh, or prize drawing for December for something. Just because I don't wear a lot of, I don't have a lot of red and green. I bought a Tix trinket that is purple, but it is downstairs. So the only thing I actually did, I ended up, because I wasn't knitting, I finally pulled out my wheel. Where I was sitting, I was worried my wheel was going to be awkward for everybody to get around, but the people around me encouraged me and helped me move stuff so that it wasn't so bad. Um, so I started working on this loop bat that I've had since Rhinebeck of last year. Um, it started out with a really bright purple, and then this is kind of a dark maroon, and then it's going to go to um, kind of a rust and the orange and the natural brownie, taupey color on the outside. This is my spinning for November for Topaz, because it's got the brown, the brown and the rust and the the beige color. I think that's close enough. Um, I worked on my scarf a little bit. I couldn't even tell you how much. I don't think it was very much. I think maybe I did three repeats. I didn't dig it out to bring it up here. Um, and then, like I said, the other thing I worked on for knitting, I can't show you yet. So, unfortunately, it's that time of year. Although that one, yeah, maybe I can show you sooner. But we'll see. All right, that's enough babble. I will remember to put the picture of my sweater at the end. Um, that's kind of a reminder to myself for when I'm going through. And I think that's everything for now. I'm sorry I don't have close-up pictures of everything. I just, I, there's no, like I said, it was cold and wet and icky. And now by the time I get home, it's dark. So unless I take it in good light, you're just not going to see it. Um, if you... Eventually stuff will get on Ravelry, but lately I've been behind on that. So I will talk to you guys all next week. I think the week is normal. <laughs> I think all the I think everything is on track for the next several weeks until we hit um, Christmas time. So alright, I'll talk to you guys all later. Bye now. Mm -hmm.